Ladies and gentlemen, I finally did it. I went on Fiverr and I literally paid somebody to handle my Google Ads campaigns and my entire Google Ads account for my e-commerce brand. And this is exactly what happened. So for those of you that have been following me for a long time now, you know that ever since 2019, when I was unfortunately suspended from Facebook ads forever, or right now, as I like to call it, that was the best thing that happened in my life. I was fully onto Google ads from the beginning. I was running a general e-commerce store, which I covered in about 99% of my videos, which were related to Google ads. And all I did was run Google ads. There was very little intervention from Google ads, maybe a little bit of retargeting here and there. However, 100% of my focus was always on Google ads. And right now in the recent time period, it got to the time period where I was actually running Google ads for my e-commerce clients under my Google Ads agency, Euro Marketing, which if you're doing around $30,000 or more and you need a little bit of extra help scaling your e-commerce brand to the next level, go on to my website at euromarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can work together and make that happen. But a lot of the strategies and a lot of the techniques that I knew about Google Ads kind of were taken to the next level after I started working with a lot of these e-commerce clients under my Google Ads agency. But in the recent time period, because of where I was and with all of the work I was doing related to Google Ads, I decided that, you know what, it's finally time to just kind of test somebody random from Fiverr and see if they can do the same kind of job or if not a better kind of job. Because I mean, who wants to sit on a Friday night, on a Saturday night, looking at their Google Ads dashboard? I know that was not the case for me. I did not always want to do that long term. So for the one of the e-commerce brands that I currently handle, I thought that there was no better time than now to just go all in and just let somebody else do the heavy lifting for me. So what I did a couple of weeks ago is exactly what I'm gonna be showing you here. So going on to Fiverr now, at that time period, I knew that I did not wanna use Upwork instead of Fiverr. And the main reason behind that is, in terms of Upwork, there's a lot of Filipinos who normally apply for jobs on Upwork. And it's not that I'd have anything against Filipinos or anything, but certain individuals are better suited for certain jobs. And personal experience, what I have noticed is those people from certain countries like European countries, for example, are more on the affordable side and they're much more experienced with Google Ads. Again, nothing to do with the country specifically, but just that region in general, more people are within this area compared to certain regions of the world. For example, I have a lot of amazing creative creators who create things like graphics and all sorts of things like things like that from the Philippines. And there is no other country out there that can really beat them in my opinion. That's of course affordable as well. So this is kind of what I knew at that time period. And that is one main reason why I also didn't want to go on Upwork to hire somebody for Google ads. And now keep in mind, I had already tried hiring people from Upwork previously and it never really went that well. So this time it was all Upwork. What I did is I went directly on Upwork and I typed in Google Ads Media Bar or just Google Ads Manager, whatever you want to call it. In this case, I do recommend that you type in Google Ads Media Bar or something similar or e-commerce Google Ads. Both of them can really do the trick. So if we type in e-commerce Google Ads, let's see what comes up. Because during that time period, there were a lot of interesting friend listings coming up which were related to Google ads and which were also related to e-commerce. So first things first, if you look at this one right here, it says I will do e-commerce marketing of Shopify store or website on Facebook, Google or Bing. At that time period, based on the experience I had hiring people for my own brand, I knew that I did not want to hire somebody who was a jack of all trades. So in this case, individual right here offers Facebook, Google and Bing. I don't think I would really want to hire somebody like this. And that's the same thing I was thinking during that time period, simply because they did three different advertising platforms at the same time. That also means their attention was divided across three different placements. So I wanted somebody who could do either Google or Bing or both of them together because those two resemble each other very, very similar. Next one, this one says, I will manage your Google Shopping Ads product listing ad campaign. So this one at that time period would have also been good. But the important thing is this only mentions Google Shopping, which means this person right here may not be too familiar with Google search ads. So nitty gritty details I was kind of looking at, and this is what they kind of offer you. So next one says, I will manage Google Ads for your Shopify store. This is much more specific and it's also pro verified. So if I had seen this at that time, 
I would have been more inclined to kind of look into this. But so at that time, I really did my best to see which person had the best kind of listing where they had actually put time into it because that's a direct indicator that they're actually putting in time, effort and energy into their job right here. And also if they have reviews or not. Now with Fiverr Upwork, it's extremely important that they have reviews. I knew this kind of from the start because I have had a lot of bad experiences hiring the wrong people. So the, what I did was just look at the reviews and kind of base what if I wanted to go with that person or not based on these reviews. And even with the reviews, trust me, it's very easy to buy fake reviews from websites. You want to make sure that the reviews actually sound credible. They sound real and it's more than just great service or amazing or great work. So these I don't necessarily think of as good reviews, but this one might be. So it says Daniel increased our ROI. I would highly recommend. So something like this would definitely do the trick, but that's essentially what I was looking at during that time period. And the person I actually chose was this person right here. Now they actually changed up their pricing completely. And also they're fully unavailable on Fiverr because now we currently work together for a longer term project. But this was actually the listing that came up and also the pricing that I saw on their other listings were much, much different, but they're no longer available on Fiverr. But as you can see, they had very good reviews and off of course, for obvious reasons, you would not necessarily be able to see who they are exactly, but they had really good reviews. There were some bad reviews here and there, but that's just the nature of the game that lets you know that this is a real person. As you can see, the bad review was a four star review. So that explains how good of a person this was. And also they took the time to make their overall listing right here. They had emojis in there, which is again good because it captures your attention. That just tells you that they would do a good job with search ads as well. And their overall account and everything, it was also very optimized. They had a very clear photo of themselves. That's essentially what I was looking at during that time period. But if you were to do this now, even on Fiverr, and again, I recommend hiring more professionals that really know what they're doing. That's what I would essentially be looking at. But that is kind of what I did when I was looking through Fiverr, just kind of had to understand if they were a good fit for me or my company or not. And one thing I kind of realized was that this person who I was about to hire to handle one of my Google ads accounts was somebody who had actually worked on an e-commerce client's account previously. And if we go ahead and go on over to that e-commerce client, look at the previous results, we can actually see that the results they were getting were actually very decent results. So this time period, for some reason, whatever changed this media buyer did will actually cause the results in terms of the cost to actually go down. But the overall ROAS kind of stayed where it was. However, during the initial time periods, the ROAS was very impressive. As you can see, 5.15, 4.70, and it was very, very consistent. So this was something I was really impressed with when I saw that this person had actually handled ads for this e-commerce client that I was actually currently working with during this time period. So that was kind of a plus point for me that I really got to look into the account directly, which they had handled. That meant that I didn't have to just listen to them talking about how they were able to achieve some great ROAS of a 5X or a 4X. Because unfortunately, a lot of the times during interviews, these people actually don't always tell the truth. So it's always better if you're also planning to do the same to actually look into the ad account itself if you can in any way, shape or form. But that kind of made me choose this person. That was the overall strategy as to why I decided to go with them. So now moving on to the actual account, which I actually gave them and how things kind of started to change. In the beginning, I was a little bit skeptical of giving them a brand new account, which was already doing well, any of my current specific accounts. So what I did is I actually gave them an account which was doing okay, but it was already pretty stable. So there was not a lot of work needed during that time period for them to come in and actually begin doing any big changes. But one thing that had started to happen with this account earlier in June was due to the economic condition, the ROAS, the cost, all of those important metrics had actually started to go down. So as you can see from June 13th to June 15th, the cost kind of dipped all the way down to kind of one third of what it used to be. And the ROAS, however, did stay the same. But what I did was because I knew that this account could have a lot of improvements and whoever would handle this account, I knew could show their side and how skilled they were if they could bring up the results here. I decided to give this person this ad account right here. And they basically started working on this ad account on July 9th. So what I want to do is I want you to look at these results that started to happen on July 9th onwards. And by the way, on July 9th, they made one specific change 
within this ad account, which was the reason the results kind of started to go up all the way. And if we look a little bit closer on the Shopify store itself to look at what happened during that time period, we can see exactly what started to happen since July 9th. So actually going back to June in the beginning, we can see sales were good, but then for whatever reason, they just had started to drop and they were at all time low. Everything was kind of going crazy during this time period. So as you can see from June 15th for about a month, sales stayed around the same, but July 9th is when I decided to give this person this ad account and they went in, did just a few different tweaks within the account, which basically started to get back the account to the levels it was once at before. And if we look at the levels this account was once at before, we can see that the results were very, very good. So again, economic conditions definitely do cause downturns like these. However, with the addition of this, person to the team, what happened was the results started to go up just a little bit, even though they're not really back at what they were right here things were looking much more positive and I could not be more happier because it was crazy just seeing somebody just come in and with one change, literally change the face of this e-commerce. Now keep a few things in mind before we actually gave this person this ad account, there were a lot of things I had to kind of walk this person through. Some things that I walked them through were our SOPs. SOPs are called standard operating procedures, which basically tells every new person in the team how I operate, how I do certain things. So how I do the naming convention for my Google ads campaigns, how I do the changes, when I do the changes, as much as I can write down, I do that before actually hiring somebody on the team. Because one thing you wanna understand is, if you just hire somebody who's inexperienced and tell them to go and just figure it out on their own, most likely you're not gonna be having a business in the next few days. And that's because a new person will try to run things on their own will as they do, and a lot of the times, they don't really know how to do things in the first place, at least according to how you have been doing it all along. And if your ad account is kind of primed to do it a certain way, that can cause a lot of big issues. So I kind of had to walk them through the surrender operating procedures, and then I had to get them accustomed to my brand and to the processes within the brand. So after all of this, and based on his experience, because I, again, I handled multiple brands, I couldn't just give him any random brand. That's what a lot of e-commerce store owners fail to understand. They just give them their brand and say, here, go in, click buttons, make it profitable. And while people like these or even people like me and my Google Ads agency are just there to help you get more results, unfortunately, we're not magicians. We can't do some abracadabra. We can't do some magic spell on your campaigns to literally boost up the results over time. Then sometimes it can happen, of course, with certain strategies like it did right here and like this media buyer did, but it does take a while for it to really kick in because as you can see, even now, things are not where they were previously. But again, just seeing that change from this individual made me get a little bit more trust in terms of their skills and how they could do all those things. But since that time period, because they did that change, the trajectory of the account completely changed. And in addition, while they made that change, they also started doing back end work. So work on the titles, work on feed optimization, installing GA4, installing enhanced conversion tracking, all of those things tremendously came into the rescue for this ad account and it really changed the face of this brand. It took it from doing basically at an all time low to then getting back on track and of course, scale is in progress as of right now. But again, that was not only because of the change they made on the Google Ads campaign side of things, it was a lot of things related to the campaigns including the back end work. But my conclusion overall based on this approach that I took towards just randomly going in and hiring somebody and the overall experience with that is a good Google Ads person, whether it's me or my agency or whether you find somebody on Fiverr can take the brand to the next level. However, hire the wrong person, hire somebody who fakes their experience, who is only good at giving interviews, but bad at actually doing the work and your brand will start to fail overnight. I've experienced this way too many times and every time it has come to bite me in the back and it really wastes a lot of time, money and energy. And of course it makes you lose momentum for your e-commerce brand. So always want to make sure that you're hiring the right person in terms of their skill level and in terms of how they are as a person. Cause you can't really teach a person to be honest. You can't really teach a person to be faithful to your company. But here are two things I definitely also look into when it comes to hiring. So 
I definitely do not want somebody on the team who needs a lot of micromanaging and I also want somebody with good technical knowledge. For example, this person I hired knew a lot about GA4, they knew how to install those conversion tracking codes, how to check for errors, how to troubleshoot, all of that important stuff which was very impressive because a lot of people and a lot of e-commerce store owners for that matter get that wrong. So just having somebody who can check that for you and of course testing them that if they can really do it or not really helps. But in addition to them in the beginning when you hire them, you need to walk them through your standard operating procedures if you have any. That's what I did with this person. I could not just tell them to jump in and do whatever they wanted because that would lead to a lot of disastrous situations. But I kind of did a lot of hand holding in the beginning, monitored them consistently in the beginning until they were able to win my trust over. But to conclude kind of any person you add to your team, whether it's somebody to handle your Google ads or anything else should be hired based on their previous experience. Again, actually go into the ad account if you can look at their experience. If you can't go inside, make them kind of show their case studies or kind of make them do screen sharing and show some of the ad accounts. But in addition, look at their content. Are they providing content on YouTube? Are they on Twitter, TikTok, anywhere out there like Reddit even and actually helping people out because that's one of the most important things that should let you know that they walk the walk and talk the talk. But in addition, are they an authority figure in the niche or are they just some random people who just like to make quick money from Fiverr or Upwork? That's very important. And of course, check their English skills, talk to them via Skype, make sure they can speak properly, make sure they can write as well. That's what I did with this person, even though they might have some kinds of accent. If you try to hire these people from Europe, Philippines, or whatever country outside the US, they might have an accent, but the important thing is they know how to speak fluently and they're able to also do proper writing as well in terms of search campaigns and copywriting in general. But in addition, look at their communication frequency. Are you answering them on a Friday and then they're getting back to you on a Monday night? or are you responding to you within a few hours, even a few minutes? With this person, the answers were within a few hours unless they were sleeping, which is of course a very good sign. People, they work until Friday and then they're unreachable on Saturday and Sunday because an emergency can happen. I'm not saying they have to work on weekends, but they should definitely be the least reachable on the weekends. But that was my overall experience hiring. So if somebody asked me if I were to do this again, I would 100,000% say yes. But this time I would kind of use my previous knowledge to make better decisions when hiring somebody long term. But again, if you're doing $30,000 or more with your e-commerce brand, you need a little bit of extra help scaling to the next level. Go onto my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can make that happen. But if you found any type of value in this video, smash that like button and smash that subscribe button and I will see you in my next video.